Wow, it's raining again. Hello, shiny, crafty people. Tim Totten here, and welcome back to the channel. Um, as you'll hear, my Central Florida rain is going off on the roof of the building, but it sounds really good, and hopefully it doesn't lull me, lull me to sleep while we go today talking about one of my favorite new mask designs. It's one that I actually wore on a plane for, gosh, I don't know, six or seven hours recently. It's this real simple design that's actually quite large. You'll notice how big it fits on the face, and it has a couple of nice features. There's uh, pleats on the side here, and it kind of rounds a little bit, has a nose wire. Um, and I like it because it's super comfortable, especially since I added the adjustable toggles on the earpieces. So why don't you join me down here at the cutting table and I'll show you what we need to do to make this really super fun mask. So first I want to tell you that this mask pattern actually came from another YouTuber and I will link in the description below exactly where to find that person's uh, video. In fact, it'll be the very first video that will be, um, in very first thing in the description will be the link to their video. It, it is just a simple, no talking video, very short with some music over it. I'm gonna give you the full tutorial here. And what we're gonna need is a pattern. It's gonna be nine by seven. So we'll cut two pieces of fabric out. You could cut a third one if you wanted three layers. And this will be nine and a half inches by seven for the larger size. And then I'll show you in the description, I'll write some different sizes for smaller ones. I'll use scissors and a rotary cutter. Um, I will need some toggles and some elastic, which I'm gonna use, some kind of a nose wire. And in fact, I'm probably gonna use one of these, but you can also use a piece of wire. I use this stuff um, from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna use a plate just to get one of the rounded curves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out a rectangle nine by seven. And then when we, we're gonna fold it in half and then in half again. So you get this shape that's got the four layers right here, right? One, two, three, four in there. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark up from the bottom fold where there's several layers coming together, two and a half inches. That's on the raw sides here. There's a raw edges, two and a half. Then on the other point where all four of those pieces come together and fold, we're gonna go up three quarters of an inch. And then from the top edge, we're gonna come over one inch. We'll mark those two together, line them together. And then what we're gonna do is, that's the two and a half inch to the one inch. And then I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna use the plate and I will, and I'm just using like a, this is a seven inch like dessert plate, but any sort of rounded edge will do. And we're just gonna connect the quarter inch, the three quarter inch mark here with the one inch mark at the top. This is just creating the, the um, shape at the nose here, this area here and down below. All right, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that out. Now I am using a paper blade in this fabric. Uh, it's not a special kind of blade, it's just one of my old blades that's no longer all that new and I'm just getting rid of it, using it for the paper and then I'll switch it out before we cut over uh, to the fabric. So what I've done is I've cut that out and you'll see that if I open all of this up, it's gonna create a pattern that looks like this. Now I could sell you a template to do this, but frankly, this is so easy to do. There's not really a reason. And instead of using this template on the fabric, I actually gonna fold the fabric and do the same thing again. So let's go ahead and uh, change out my blade and then we'll go to that part. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut my nine and a half by seven inch piece out of here. And like I said, you could do uh, different dimensions if you were if you're going for a smaller a um, a smaller mask like I would suggest taking an inch off of each of those dimensions for someone with more like a medium sized face but I'll put that down in the description below some different size options so I'm just I I know that this uh, square that I'm using is nine and a half inches I've got a different blade here now and then I'll just cut off that at nine and a half inches. And then I'm gonna come back in and cut seven and a half inches. And the way I'll do that is I will line up at one edge and cut it straight. And then I will mark from that edge. Let me turn it this way so I can do it this way. I'll mark from that edge. I'll put this on seven inches on the, on the, the template right there because this needs to be nine and a half by seven. All right, and that's how I got my nine and a half by seven. Now, I'm gonna cut each of these fabrics separately. And that's important because I don't, if I folded this right now, it would get bulk inside and it would throw off your measurements. So in fact, each of them needs to be sort of cut on its own 
and I'm going to use my iron. Now, I, I have actually used a different iron in the past, and I'm going to tell you why I'm not using it. I was using a press called the Home Ever iron to press things, and unfortunately, um, so many people were interested in it that apparently they can't keep it in stock on Amazon. With the number, I, and I believe it because the number of people who have asked me where what it is and where I got it. So I'm not going to use it today because I don't want anyone to be upset that they can't get a, get one of them. So I'm doing that fold over just like I did on the paper. I love a lot of steam. You see how much steam is coming off of that? Oh, it's so good. That's one finished. I'll set it aside. And we'll do the other one the same way. So I actually folded it the, the lengthwise, the, you know, folded the longest side first. I kind of want to do them the same. Not that it totally matters, but I like to be a stickler for that sort of thing. All right, I have those two together. So what I'm going to do next is to make those same measurements. Remember here I did, this, this is on the actual fold, which would be right there. The folds, see the fold of the fabric there? So we're gonna mark up three quarters of an inch from the bottom. I'm gonna mark over one inch from this corner. I'm gonna mark up two and a half inches from this corner. Then I'm going to connect these two marks along the top edge. And what I want to make sure is that what I'm cutting off is all of the, the layers that are separate from each other. Cut all of those. Now this is going to be harder to do on this particular one, but I'll show you the secret of what I'm going to do. I'm going to layer the two on top of each other. And I will go ahead and cut that line straight through all the layers. Now it's going through eight layers of fabric, so if you're not comfortable doing this, you really need to uh, you need to think about a different strategy. Don't do it this way, but and maybe get a chalk pencil or something. I really just don't want to go grab a chalk pencil. So I'm going through eight layers of fabric with a brand new blade, so that's not a problem. All eight of those layers are there. So now I have all of these layers. And then I'm going to cut with my use my plate and mark that other mark that I showed you. And I'll connect those two together. Now you could use a pair of scissors with this if you were uncomfortable. So what we've gotten from that is Two of these exactly the same, right? There we go. And that one and another one just like it. Ooh. And I'm gonna hit these with the iron first before I show you how to do the rest of the parts. You could leave that middle crease in if you wanted to but it needs to be the other direction. In other words, I need to fold it right sides together like this. So it's better to take out that previous one and go here. So that's one of those done. I will iron the other one. Press it, I should say, not iron it. I'm gonna press it flat. One of the things I really like about this particular design is that it doesn't have a big cut line right through the middle here where my mouth is pretty much gonna be. Um, but you could, if you were worried about too much, you could do a third layer in the middle. It would make no difference otherwise to the way this is gonna work. All right, so my next step is to go here and stitch both of these along those marks. But I'm gonna tell you, on the one that I did originally, I just went ahead and stitched straight through uh, the entire thing because it was a little wide in my face anyway. So I'm actually gonna stitch all the way along here using a quarter of an inch seam on both of these. 
And then I'm gonna do something a little different than the video you're gonna watch. I'm gonna put the pleats here in the side, which you see here on this mask that I've worn way too much over the last month. And I'll put the elastic in rather than doing a casing like the, uh, the other video does. I like this version a little bit better. So join me at the sewing machine and we'll go ahead and stitch these parts on. So here at the sewing machine, I am going to um, use a quarter inch seam allowance, which for me is basically the width of my presser foot here. And I will start right at the top. I'm gonna back stitch a little and then just follow right along the edge here, all the way down. That's one, and then we'll do the second one just the same way. So I will line that up. Oh, kind of came out of there. Did you see that? Now, I think I'll just fix this at the top a little bit, like how it went. All right, so those are both completed, stitched together with that opening in there. And then we'll go back to the iron and I'll show you how to pleat the rest of it. All right, I have these. I'm just gonna give it a quick press, although it's not really all that necessary. I just, I just like to steam that seam in. And then we're gonna find our points here on the edge to put in our pleats. Now you'll see that here on this part and these pleats are, it's a one inch section that gets pleated. So you're gonna go from the center and I just have to find the center of this. And it's real easy to do. I just take my ruler and place it on and that is just about five inches. So I'm gonna put a mark at two and a half. And this side I'm gonna put a mark at two and a half. Should be five inches because remember we cut two and a half before. And so I need to go one inch on either side and then that point will stretch into the middle. So I'll put my mark on there and mark one inch and one inch. Same thing on this one, one inch and one inch. Now you'll wanna transfer those to the other side as well. So I can place this here. Just use the marks from the bottom one to transfer. And you know, honestly, if you didn't want to, if you didn't want to put the marks in, you could use just pins to put them in. I am gonna pin this when I get the, the pleats ready. Let me give you a closer view. So now I've made marks one inch from either side and I'm basically going to fold at that mark and then bring it to the center. See what we've done? Fold at the mark and bring it to the center. Fold at that mark and bring it to the center, which will give us a one inch pleat that some might call a box pleat because it's on top. When I flip this over, you're gonna get a better view of what this looks like. Now you could use clips. This is not gonna be anywhere near my mouth, so I'm not worried about putting holes in it, but that's the, the pleat that it creates. And I'm gonna do the same thing just on the other side. So I'm going to fold at that mark that I made and then fold that mark to the middle mark right here. And put a pin in it. Then I'll do the same thing with the other one. I fold in, pinch at that pleat and then fold it into the center. Now, one of the options that you can do with this is would be to iron this right now, but I don't wanna iron the pleat all the way into the middle because we want it to open up. So the better plan is to go to the sewing machine and just stitch those pleats down, which I will do before I put all this together. And that's only because I really don't wanna have them fall out while I'm actually um, sewing the, the elastic and everything else in. So let's do these as well. Now, one option for you is to fold this over at that line and press it if you really wanted to give it a lot of, be really uh, anal retentive about this maybe. Maybe you're really focused on doing things exactly perfect. Like I said, it's not as big of a deal to me, but everyone should do their own thing. And then you can fold that center 
back to the middle. You know, then you could press that if you really felt like it. And we're really moving along. Same thing with this one. Fold it to the center. And then I'll show you one other technique, because hey, we're, we're about giving a billion techniques here. One more technique. I still think I should pin this just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. So since I'm gonna put it in the sewing machine, I'll kind of give it a pin across all of that. How's that sound? So I pinned across that. I'm gonna start sewing here and go down. Now on this one, let's just watch this. I'm gonna take three pins, okay? I'll put one right where that, the one inch mark is from the center, another one inch mark from the center, and the third one I'll put right there in the middle in the center. Then all I have to do is fold those pins to each other. Once those pins have reached each other, just like that, I can take out the back pin. Well, I just took out both of them, but it's all right. I'll take one out and put it back in. Take out that pin. Yay. Put the center pin back in, because I'm gonna need it. And then fold that pin back and move it out. All right, we have that pinned, ready to go. The other one, meet me over at the sewing machine and I'll show you what's next. So here's where I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch those pleats in real quick. And honestly, I'm gonna go at my quarter of an inch. I am gonna go right up to the pin and then take it out. I don't wanna run it over. And that's just to put that pleat in. Now that pleat is in place. Same thing on the other three. You know, when I got on get on an airplane and have to go for five or six hours, uh, I'm not looking to balance the efficacy of a of a uh, of a mask with also the comfort of the mask. So comfort is just as important in that regard. And really, on a plane, my goal is to make it so that I don't have to take that mask off because it's uncomfortable and so that I'm not just like spitting and coughing out of the people. So I'm less concerned really for myself about when I wear a mask about having super high filtration and everything else. I'm really just looking to not cough on people or spit on them while I'm on the plane. And so for that regard, this mask really works well for me. I did it with two layers. You could certainly do it with more if you felt like you needed to. And, uh, and there we go. There's those first, those pleats put in now let's put this thing together. All right, so we're back here at the table and what we're gonna do is open these up and I'm gonna add in my elastic. Now you certainly could go to that original video that was done by the lady who, um, you know, who I've told you is so good, but, uh, and she uses a casing, but I'm, I'm just like not a big fan of that. I prefer to do them this way and I'm gonna show you. Now I'm gonna cut these nine and a half inches long because I'm gonna add a toggle. So I don't really care that they're super long. It's actually easy to cut these at the same time as you're cutting your regular fabric because then you just get the right size immediately. So I'm gonna take one and put it on the edge, pinning it right here, right to the edge, going in about a quarter of an inch from that point because that's of course where we're gonna turn the stitching. And so I don't really want it right in the exact corner. You could of course go right into the corner, but this is how I prefer to do it. Then I'm gonna make sure that this particular type of elastic stays flat so that it doesn't, I don't get a turn in it. I would really hate that if I went to put it on my ears and it twisted in the middle. So I'll pin that on. And of course, what this means is, um, and I wanna make sure that's out of the way inside. If you wanted, you could have put a pin in there. I'm just gonna make sure it holds in. And I'll do the same thing on this side as well. Go about a quarter of an inch or more from the corner but still running it right along the edge here, but I'm going a quarter in from the top. And then I'm gonna turn this all the way, make sure it's flat. Now we are gonna sew this entire thing together and leave an opening to turn it inside out. So the next part is to place, it's exactly the same top or bottom, place right sides together. So you see the wrong sides of the fabric are sticking out and you're gonna line up each of those points. See that where those two stitches come together? I'm gonna line that up, line those up and put a pin in it. Again, you could use um, 
You could use clips if you wanted. They make some really nice clips. I've decided not to because frankly, it's all along the edge and I'm not worried about a hole. But if you are concerned about a hole, please, by all means, do that. Get clips and use those instead. And I'm just going all the way around this, making sure the elastic is out of the way as I pin this all the way around. And I'll go here to the middle again, to that middle point, make sure that those get done the same direction to that area where it comes together. I do something called nesting these where one seam goes one way and one goes the other. That's really up to you to do, but it locks them together. It's kind of nice. It's something I learned from my quilting days. A lot of uh, Eleanor Burns and and others teaching me how to sew. And I'm gonna come to this top piece here and finish pinning all this together. Now, I wanna leave an opening along here. So I'm actually gonna leave the opening up. I'll, I'll, I'll put a pins in place to show me where I wanna leave the opening. One there, leave the opening down here, enough where I can turn that corner. So I'll leave that opening and then I'll stitch all around along the outside of the rest. I'll put pins in here so I know where this is. This is held together, even though it's just a straight line. Sometimes it gets out of the way. All right, our next step is to stitch around the entire thing, leaving just that opening so it can turn inside out. Guess what? We're going to the sew machine. All right, so I'm gonna start right here where this first pin is. I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance again. I'm gonna back up here just to tack it in place and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And then I will start stitching. Make sure that elastic gets held in there. You gotta be careful. So I'm holding my finger here on the elastic. I'm just going all the way around now. I should have taken that other pin out. I didn't. Don't be mad at me. I'm not always good at taking my pins out when they have to be taken out. Make sure the center piece goes and then stop here at this other pin like I talked about so I have room to turn it inside out. All right, that entire piece has been put together and now we're gonna go to the sewing machine or to the uh, ironing board, turn this inside out and get ready to put in our nose piece. All right, so here's the piece pulled together. You'll see the spot where we haven't stitched. So I'm just gonna turn this whole thing inside out while we're here. And actually you can get, get a hold of the um, elastic pieces if you need to, and that'll really help to turn this thing inside out. You know, it also helps to be like a, um, a chopstick or a point turner, something designed specifically. I mean, if it's a chopstick, it's not designed for this, but it can be used for this. If you use a point turner, those are specifically designed for this. But really, there's not many points to turn, so I'm just gonna sort of get in there and, and pull this out and run my finger along those seams. And then we'll go to the sewing, or to the iron, not the sewing machine, to the iron, and sort of press this flat as best as we can. But you'll see we're starting to get that shape for our face. So come right down here and I'll show you how to press this and how to put in a nose wire. All right, there that is. And what I'm gonna do is just get a little press, flatten these parts out and press a little. And all along these edges where the, where those pleats were in. Now, if you have the kind of elastic that melts really easily, then obviously don't put your iron directly on top of it. I folded that part in there that was the turn, because I will need to press that as well and then, and then stitch it down. We are gonna stitch the entire thing around, edge stitch it. But first I wanna put in my nose wire. I love having a nose wire in these because um, it just makes it so easy to form properly to your face. So I'm gonna put that wire in this area. And there's two ways to do that. I could lay the wire in, I could put this in from that hole up in here and then try to stitch around it. I could stitch a line and then put the nose wire in there, um, which is another option. 
I don't mind actually putting the nose wire in, holding it in place, and then stitching around it. But I actually want to use one of these nose wires that actually I got with um, the big bulk elastic that I bought. You can also buy these. These can, can stick in with a piece of tape if you want to. I'm not even going to take the tape off. I'm just going to slide it up in there. And um, after I stitch a line. So I'm going to come through here. This, this nose wire, you know, is how wide is that? I'll use some pins to sort of mark off where I need to start and end. So I kind of need to start and end in this area. And then in this area. There we go. So I'm actually going to stitch down here and down the bottom and leave one side open so I can reach the nose wire up through here and put it on. So I went and did that. I'll leave you on this side, it's gonna be easier. I went and did that. Now you might use a different thread. I wanted a thread that you would be able to see easily. So I, I would have done a white thread otherwise because I really like the white with this, especially since I chose the white elastic, but I don't think you would have seen it as easily. So I have left, as you'll notice, I started stitching on one side and then I went and left it open on the other side. And that's because I'm gonna take this in through that hole and go up there going in from this side, you might be able to see it pushing right there and push that along that space. So now it's held in there and you'll see a nose wires is now bending. All right, the last step is to go around. I'll, I'll stitch right up the side of that. You'll see, I'm gonna stitch right up the side of this and then stitch all the way top, stitch all the way around the entire thing. So let's go to the sewing machine. I'll show you that last part and then we are done with this cool mask. As I said, I'm going to finish stitching up the side here and then go all the way around. And I'm going to edge stitch this, which means I'm going to use not even a full quarter of an inch, more like an eighth of an inch to edge stitch this entire thing. And then I get down here to where I've put in that where I put that hole in to stitch it back together, I just had to make sure I am catch, catching all the extra fabric there. And then I'm gonna take this right back to where that nose piece started. And there you go, I've stitched all the way around the entire thing and it's got the nose wire in. So here we go. There's the finished mask, and I'm gonna add the toggles to it now. Now the toggles that I use, um, I'll try to put a link in the description below. Um, I like these toggles because, um, here's what the toggles kinda, oh, there, look like on their own. And then they sent me this open pin to be able to put them on. So what I do is I take the piece and I just sort of hold it to where it's even and then I can squeeze the end of the piece together there and put that into the end of the toggle and squeeze it down until it comes down onto the elastic. Take that one out. Same thing here. Oh, I dropped it. <laughs> there on the end, make sure it's sort of evenly set. And then I'm going to put that toggle right through, see there, and hold it and bring it down onto the elastic. All right, now I'll just check where my nose wire is right here in the middle, put that on my nose and pull out the sides. So it's time for me to review this mask. I'm gonna tell you for, um, I always give reviews for out of 10. I look at ease of making it, the comfort of wearing it and how efficient it is. So for this mask, First of all, I like that it's reversible, so I'll reverse it. For ease of making it, there's a little bit of skill involved with uh, sewing around those curves. So I'm gonna say it's about a seven and a half out of 10. I got something on it there. It's not good. Oh, well, I have to clean that off. Let me go to the other side so you won't see it so bad. I'm gonna say it's about a seven and a half out of 10 for ease of, comp uh, ease of making it. The ease to make it seven and a half out of 10, like you don't need major sewing skills, but you do have to put some pleats in and do, draw some lines that are half circles, that kind of thing. 
Um, so that's ease of uh, making it seven out of 10. For the comfort, I gotta tell you, I wore one of these sort of um, stretched all the way out, you know, uh, on a plane to Pennsylvania. And I had to wear it in the airport for two out, almost two hours before the flight. I wore it for a two hour flight and I wore it for 30 to 40 minutes getting off and getting my baggage. So that was what, four and a half, almost five hours I wore it and it was super comfortable. I like it because it goes down around underneath my chin. It goes up here, no problem. It does suck in at the sides here because of the pleats. I feel really comfortable in this mask. And in fact, I could wear this for a long time. It doesn't really touch my mouth too much. So I'm gonna say out of comfort, this is an eight out of 10. I'm a fan of how comfortable it is. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna actually give it a nine out of 10 for comfort because I remember how long I wore this for compared to the other masks. It's only one other mask that I like really more for this in terms of comfort. So I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. And then out of the efficiency or the efficacy towards, you know, helping all the things, I understand that this is not a perfectly sealed mask. It's got some space on the sides if I pull on it. It's a big sort of mask. It's not super tight under my chin, but that's why it's comfortable. So the design of it is really meant to keep me from spitting or coughing on other people. And for what it does, it does that beautifully. So for that efficacy, I give it at least a nine out of 10, but I'm gonna have to take off a little bit of points because it's not super stuck to my face like other masks would. Maybe if I tightened up the, the straps, it would be a lot tighter, but then it wouldn't be very comfortable. And in that case, I'd probably wear an N95 mask or something else if I wanted to be super efficient. So we're gonna say an eight out of 10 for efficiency uh, on this one for the efficacy. All right, well, that's this super fun mask. You can find the link to the original video in the description below. Um, and big kudos to that, uh, that maker. And I'm glad that uh, she, they showed it off to me so I could show it to you. This is the really simple uh, mask design, the, the side pleated, I don't even know what I'm gonna call this one. I'll figure it out after I end the video and I'll just write it here and probably on the title of the video. Well, until next time, I've been Tim Totten and you have been watching Shiny Crafty People. Hey, please, until next time, folks, stay crafty. Bye for now. Oh, makes me want to get on another plane. <laughs>